Before we get started, my close partner Pro Guides has a small announcement to make. I'm excited to say they're adding a ton of features to the site, including exclusive guide videos for Pro members every single day. Their Pro Pass now gives access to all games, including Smash, Fortnite, League of Legends, CSGO, and more. And lastly, they've just launched their 24-7 coaching system for Smash. Pro Guides has really been listening to the community. Since launching, they've added competitively accurate tier lists, step-by-step -step advanced techniques, patch notes, and more. They heard community suggestions about wanting more advanced content and let me know that guides with ultimate tournament winners and contenders are on the way. I highly recommend checking them out. Sign up with my link below to get additional free coaching sessions when you go pro. Guys, I gotta be honest with you. I wasn't able to crash the game this time. Almost every video there was a brand new way to crash the game, but they've stopped me. I'm not sure how to go on with this. I'm not even sure how to... Oh! Hey, at least we got this! Pretty neat, huh? Welcome to version 4.0, with the hero from Dragon Ball joining the battle. See, the joke is that Dragon Quest was drawn by Dragon Ball artist Akira Toriyama. Therefore, the characters reflect his art style and they look like Goku. You may now applaud and laugh at this joke. With the new content and balance patch comes some more broken stuff. And some of that stuff was never patched, but it's okay. And some of it is... maybe exactly or not exactly the way you expected it to go. We can figure out which later. So how about we get going on to the first clip? Show me hero! <sighs> I'll get to that. First, let's start off with an old classic. If you've watched this series before, you'll remember this. A few patches ago, there was a glitch that let Villager be slightly tilted and just be stuck that way. Now you can do it again, but with Inkling. You're gonna want to go to the Venom stage with Inkling and whatever other character you want. Position Inkling at the top of the sloped area here, then simply side B down the slope. Inkling will bounce back up and then be stuck like this. Just like with Villager, a majority of their moves will look weird but function the same and getting hit will set you back to normal. Just go back to the same spot and do it again. As far as I know, this can't be done on another sloped stage because it isn't done the same way as Villager. It's not necessary to hit Inkling, but the way she hits the ground and bounces back up and the canceling of the animation causes this to happen. Pretty fun to do nonetheless. For my next trick, I'm going to shrink Pokemon without a mushroom. Bam. This one's pretty easy to do as well. You're going to want to go to Garden of Hope with Pokemon Trainer. You'll also want to be in training mode. When you first start, the pot that's built by all of the Pikmin will be destroyed. Wait for them to start building it. As it's being built, spawn in a rolling crate and crouch on top of it. Once the Pikmin are done building, you'll see that the Pokemon is small. Don't move, because if you do, you'll grow again. Instead, switch your Pokemon with a down B, and then you're free to move around. Doing this gives you all the benefits of using a poison mushroom, so it really has no practical use. What happens is the game still thinks that the original Pokemon you used is still inside of the pot, but switching will just send you right out. If you switch back to the original Pokemon you used, you'll grow again. And also when the pot is destroyed by Big Boy over here, you'll also grow. Pretty neat to mess around with. Or you could just use a poison mushroom for the same effect. That works too. Let's fuse Corrin and Olimar together. I've done it! There it is, ladies and gentlemen. We finally have a functioning Corrin and his massive growth. Just kind of there. I don't really know what else to say here, but Olimar is there forever. Here's what you need to do for this. Get Corrin and Olimar on a preferably flat stage with one stock. And then, get their percentages up to a point where you can get a cinematic KO. It's easier just to use the handicap and set it yourself. Once you've done this, throw the blue Pikmin at Corrin. And then with some very precise timing, you need to do down throw to Olimar. The blue Pikmin needs to hit Corrin at the same time the throw connects and the cinematic plays. If you do everything with the right timing, Corrin will slow down and Olimar will be stuck. Corrin can move around and do whatever, but be careful not to hit Olimar or else he gets out. And we wouldn't want that now, would we? Olimar can't be controlled at all, but his Pikmin will try their best to move around with him. I don't fully understand why this works or if it can be done with other characters. So mess around, let me know what you find. I'm just gonna sit here and let Olimar suffer a little longer. Do you remember that time Pac-Man threw his hydrant and it flew off into the stratosphere? Me too! I'm gonna teach you how to do it. Go to the Paper Mario stage with Pac-Man, but we specifically need the ship phase in order for this to work. Wait a little bit and get to the ship. 
Once you're here, position Pac-Man around this slope, and then just keep throwing fire hydrants. At different times, the boat will be shaken by water or the whale, and during those times, the hydrant has a chance to just float off and keep spinning. It's a bit weird, but it's something to do with the slopes, because this can be done on other stages like Distant Planet, and you can get the same effect. There's really not much else to this, but it's just... so mesmerizing to look at. Wow. Uh, Alright. Alright. We'll move on now. Let's get into some stuff with Hero. Boy, is there a lot. I want to start with... this one. Hero's Final Smash is a buggy mess, and it's so fun to mess with. This glitch makes it really slow. It may look like this has been edited, but I promise you, it's really like this. So there are a bunch of ways to do this, but I'm going to show you how I did it. You'll need Hero, two characters, and the bomber item. Whenever you use the bomber, you'll always see this little slowdown right before the explosion. That's our ticket to success. Give Hero a smash ball, and then give one character the bomber. With precise timing, you need to use the bomber, and then the final smash on the third character. If the final smash hits right when the bomb slows down time, so will the final smash. And it goes... on... forever. Eventually the final smash will end, and things will go back to normal. But just look at it! This happens because the background of all the Dragon Quest protagonists is actually a separate MP4 file, and not a modeled area like King K. Rule or Incineroar. So the slowdown of the bomber will make this part much slower, while the modeled sequence of the player stays the same. It's a bit weird, but because of this, we can also do it with Joker. It goes exactly how you'd expect. Still slow, but the game sequence stays the same up until it's fully back into the game, and the MP4 in the background is slowed down. So now we go on to our next thing, and Hero is able to instantly end a game with his final smash. Like so. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. You'll need a custom stage, or Great Cave Offensive. But take this custom stage so you never have to go to the bad one. You'll also want to keep an eye on stocks. I used two or more. You'll need to get the opponent to a high enough percentage, so let's just say 100 or more. Give Hero a final smash, and then move the other player up to the lava wall. Take note of the stock count. In this case, two. Use the final smash, and... I turn the stocks up to 99 just to show you what happens, and what happens is the player will die twice. If you get a third player and start a two-stock match and try again, the player will lose all of their stocks and... What? Okay, I guess Mario's just eternal now. He can move around and attack, but I guess he just doesn't have stocks now? Just to see what would happen if someone with stocks died, the game just ignored the eternal player, and gave the win to whoever was left. They are truly a ghost. None of this makes sense why this happens, but it has something to do with the initial hit of the final smash. There's no invulnerability at the end. Any other final smash I tried completely ignored the lava, but this one will kill the player right when they touch it. As an extra bonus glitch, if you get lucky enough, you can make a screen KO happen inside the final smash, and then they just disappear when it's over. What the fu- As another added bonus, if you get final smash meters involved, and kill the player right before they get the meter... They become part of the infinite hive mind. They get stuck with the final smash aura, but different. They'll walk through people, and have a few extra weird things going on. Man, this glitch really keeps on giving. However, that's all it's got to give. But there may be some extra things we don't know, so mess around. Now we move on to this. Just this. Forever. Hero can get stuck in Zoom forever. To do this, you're gonna need this custom stage here. Although it can be done on stages like Palutena's Temple. I don't recommend trying because you need a lot of airspace. Start a match with timers and super mushrooms. Have Hero grab a super mushroom and place him over on this metal area. Use the Zoom spell and you'll start going through all the portals. Have another player grab a timer to slow down Hero before he shrinks. Then he'll turn back to normal and start flying back down through the portals. Then he'll just plop back on the platform, stuck in this pose. You can push him around, but he can't be hit or interacted with. Not much else after this, but you could just look at him if you want. Lovely. This glitch will also work on another custom stage in a different way, but this is also a transition into another glitch. Bet you didn't know that. Well, now you do, and my plan's ruined. You're gonna want to go to this custom stage here. Fitting name, really. 
Now this stage doesn't make any sense. It's a single thin line with a block below it, but what it does to the players is lock them inside of an invisible box. No clue how this is possible. A lot of moves will either get stuck inside of the box, or move completely outside of it, with a lot of inconsistencies like Luigi's fireball moving, but Lucario's sphere staying in place. This stage just doesn't make sense. If you use a final smash, sometimes you can escape and walk around freely. And sometimes you can both get stuck inside the same invisible box. Every character has something different they can do on this stage, so mess around and see what you can find. I've got two quick visual glitches to look at. First, we'll do one with Cloud and his limit. What you're gonna want to do is choose Cloud and go to any stage, then charge up his limit. Right as his limit is finished charging, you'll use Finishing Touch. But very quickly, you'll want the other character to interrupt it during the first few frames. Then go back to charging immediately. If you do it fast enough, you'll still have the limit bar flashing at full. This does absolutely nothing, and if you don't charge it, it just goes away. But hey, gotta appreciate the small things. Then we've got a simple one with the Galaga item. Get Ice Climbers, Galaga, and you'll probably want a flat stage. Get Ice Climbers up to a high enough percent that you can get a star KO with the Galaga item. Around here should work. Throw the Galaga item, and when it comes to grab them, grab. The Galaga will take only one Climber and star KO. Kill the other one right when the star KO starts. They'll both disappear, but the Galaga will be left in the back for a few seconds. Once again, this does absolutely nothing, but you gotta appreciate the little things. I tried adding a third player to see if the effect stayed after they lost all their stocks, but it disappeared and I was left sad and disappointed, so I'm just gonna move on. Okay, here we are. Our final glitch is this. Don't you like it? This glitch requires Spear Pillar, the Badge Arcade Assist Trophy, and some lucky RNG. Set the other character to a very high percentage, and then wait until one of the background Pokemon destroys a part of the floor. Once the floor is destroyed, go down into the cave below and stand under the broken ceiling. Now you'll have to time this properly because it's different each time. Spawn and grab the Badge Bunny Assist Trophy at the right time, like this. He'll grab the player at the time the area reforms and he'll just be stuck, until he finally lets go. The reason that we use such a high percentage is because if it's too low, they'll just be let go of very quickly. But now they'll be grabbed for a very long time. Hitting the grabbed opponent will make them fall out, so you'll just have to sit back and watch. That's gonna do it for this one. If you want to keep up with what's going on, be sure to subscribe, and check out my other media in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Later.